Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to Predatory Exotics. Today's video is gonna be a complete care guide for this girl, the Kenyan Samboa. Firstly, I'd like to mention this Kenyan Samboa is currently in shed. You can see it's got all the gray coloring to it. This isn't its full potential beauty. It's usually a super bright orange color and brown. Super awesome snake with awesome colors, but unfortunately it's in shed at the moment. So let's talk about the naming of the Kenyan Samboa. The Kenyan Samboa, the Latin name is Gongolophus colubrinus. It was formerly in the Eryx genus and was actually split up into two separate subspecies. The Eryx colubrinus colubrinus was the nominate form, was the sort of normal coloration, and then in the southern range was the Eryx colubrinus loverigi. Uh, these were thought to be more beautiful, had a better orange color, and these are the ones that were more sought after in the hobby. But now they've changed genus and they're in the Gongolophus genus, uh, so they're all under the same one. This doesn't mean you can't get separate ones. Uh, you can get the Dodoma, which is a specific locality of Kenyan Samboa, actually found in Tanzania and these are thought to have the super orange color. So you can look for those ones if you do want a high orange one, but most of them have that beautiful orange color anyway. So while we're talking about the colors of your Kenyan Samba, as you can see, or you can almost see on this one, has super orange colors with loads of different brown blotches on it. And there's several different browns on there, as well as the orange. Obviously the shed is making it a little bit more difficult to see, but they are beautiful snake with awesome natural colors. Um, something that I think is really popular and we'll talk about the morphs in just a minute. The other thing to note with its appearance, they actually have different scalation on their body. So towards the head and the rest of the body is smooth scales and then towards the bottom they actually have keeled scales on their tail. This could be to do with warding off predators, they'll actually use it to hurt a predator, especially on the tail. It is quite pointy and they'll use it to defend themselves or it could also be to when they it could also be when they're actually going through the soil, it will help with propulsion. They'll get more grip and traction as they push themselves through the loose soil. Well, I keep calling it the Kenyan Samba because that's actually its common name, but they're found in far more countries than just Kenya. They can be found all the way up in Egypt, all the way down through the different countries, including Sudan, South Sudan, Somalia, all the way to Niger, and then eventually down to Tanzania and Kenya. So they have a massive wide range and they can be found in sort of that arid scrubland and almost semi-desert semi, semi -desert regions. They like the loose substrate as well as being nice, hot and dry. That is where they'll thrive and that is where these guys do best. So Kenyan Sambos have a very stocky body and stocky head. They don't have much of a neck as you can see. They're very sausage-like. This is so that they can go through the loose substrate nice and easy. And then if you look up close, they have a shovel-like snout, which means they can dig through the loose soil nice and easily and they can basically swim right through it. And then another feature is on top, they have the eyes, not on the side. This is so when they poke their head out of the substrate, there's only a small portion of them outside. So there's only a small portion of them outside, and then they can catch their prey by staying almost completely hidden and pouncing out at the perfect moment. So when we're talking about the Kenyan Samboa, obviously we've got to think of what would Kenya be like. Um, that means it's going to be hot and dry, so your temperature regions are going to be anywhere from 31 to 34 degrees Celsius. That's sort of 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit if you're looking at that. This will keep them nice and warm, especially if you keep a hot spot um, of that temperature, as well as using a heat mat or heat bulb. Um, we currently use a heat mat as we find it a little bit easier, but you can use something like an Arcadia deep heat projector as well. And then as we're talking about temperature, we'll also talk about humidity. They're from hot, dry regions, so you really don't need any humidity with this species. Obviously, we're gonna keep a fresh water bowl in there just because we do that with all our captive animals, but they're not gonna need any sort of humidity, no misting, anything like that. They'll do perfect in a dry substrate. So we've talked about the humidity and temperature. Let's talk about the actual setup. You're gonna see on the screen now what our setup looks like. It's very basic. Unlike some of our bioactive enclosures, these really do well in a simple setup. So we have Lignocell. You need a loose, friable substrate, which means that they can burrow through it quite easily. Um, you can do one that is more natural with a sand and soil mix, but it's actually easier to keep them on something like a softwood shavings. That's why we choose the Lignocell. You can choose Aspen, but it does sometimes have splinters in, so we went for Lignocell as it is a softwood. 
It might seem strange because they're a sand burrow that we don't keep it on sand, but it's easier to keep it clean and it actually is easier for them to burrow through. And it seems nice and happy and healthy, so we're gonna keep it like that. And you can see we have a few hides for decoration. Um, these are mostly just for texture and enrichment purposes. We have the cork bark and the different hides that it can rub itself on. Um, because the substrate actually acts as its own hide, we don't need hides in there. It's just for aesthetic purposes. And as I said, the enrichment for the snake, it might enjoy it a little bit. We're not too sure, but we have it in there just in case. And in terms of lighting, you don't need any special lighting. Um, because this snake gets all its nutrients from the mice that it eats, you don't need a UVB light. Um, you can put one on there if you think it'll enrich them. Um, but we don't choose to put one on there. We have a simple LED that we can turn on for display purposes. Um, but other than that, you don't actually need any extra lighting. So what is the temperament of a Samba? Obviously, you can see it's very calm. Um, they'll be their most aggressive when they're actually in shed. So you can see this snake's in shed and it's not giving me any hassle at all. It's a beautiful snake and something that we're really, really glad we have. Um, they can be a bit nippy at times because they sit inside the substrate with their head poking out waiting for food. So if you catch them at the wrong moment, they might think you're food. So if they do, so if they are in that position, make sure you go in from behind, pick them up from underneath the substrate so they don't think you're a mouse and you should be all good. Never had any bites from this one and hopefully we keep it that way. So what do you feed a Kenyan sandbar? They are rodent eaters, so they're gonna eat mice. Um, depending on what size your sandbar is, is actually gonna be what size you feed it. This one is almost fully grown and it's on small mice. Um, this one will eat small mice and possibly medium white mice once it gets to a larger size, um, but it eats them about once a week. The females will eat once a week, maybe twice a week if they're growing and if they're producing babies and then males won't eat as much. They'll probably eat every two weeks because they're smaller and they don't need as much feeding and it is known for them to go off feeding quite a lot. Um, especially when they're shedding like this one, we won't feed it maybe for two weeks um, just because it won't eat while it's shedding. And then males have been known to go off food for months as they really aren't interested in once, once they get to that full adult size. So there's actually a large sexual dimorphism between males and females of Kenyan sandboas. This is due to their size. Uh, males are much smaller than females. Males will reach anywhere from a foot and a half to two feet in length. And then females will get bigger, anywhere up to three foot in length. So females can pretty much double the size of the males, and that's how you tell the difference. Females can be much larger and stockier. And then on the tail, the females will actually have a shorter, stubbier tail, and the males will have a longer, thinner tail as well. So the only time you may have to do anything extra with your samba is actually when it's in shed like this. Um, obviously, because they're from a drier area and drier substrate, uh, it's harder for them to get that skin off. So sometimes if they shed and it doesn't come off all in one piece, you can give it a bath just in some lukewarm water. That'll help loosen that dry skin and it'll peel off nicely and you won't have any issues. So if you don't like the normal wild morph of the Kenyan Sandbar, there's also some designer morphs that you can get. This one that we actually own is double hep for snow. So that means it has the albino and the anery gene. So we, we could produce aneries, albinos and snows from this if we do choose to breed it in the future. Not only can you get those morphs, you can get azanthics and you can get paradox, which have some normal coloration coming through as well, or there's some striped ones. It's really hard for us to get different morphs in the UK. There's a lot more available in the US and Canada. Um, we'd like to get more, but it's hard to get hold of them and they are really pretty, but luckily enough, the wild morph is a beautiful morph as well. Kenyan Sambos are a great beginner snake and a great snake for kids. This is because they're slow moving and they're very docile. Um, so they're easy to handle and they don't get very large. A small snake that's very friendly and doesn't do a lot in terms of movement, makes it great for kids and adults alike, but something I definitely recommend for a beginner snake keeper. As you can see, so easy to handle, so calm, and a definite favorite. So I hope you have found this care guide for the Kenyan Sambo are super helpful. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel on Predatory Exotics. Uh, but from me and this Kenyan Sambo, we hope you have a lovely day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.